Hello and welcome to Dateline London, the Labour Party conference, a meeting of minds or a party in continuing turmoil. Vladimir Putin and Russia's role in Syria. Plus, does the Volkswagen case prove that you can buck the market, at least until you get caught? My guests are Mark Roche of Les Points, Janet Daly of the Sunday Telegraph, Dmitry Shishkin of BBC World Service Group and Greg Katz of Associated Press. Good to see you. Well, one of the reasons political parties have annual conferences to, is to cheer themselves up. How likely is this with a new leader of the Labour Party whose conference begins this weekend? And how far is the hostility of what some see as the Westminster political and media elite likely to increase support for Jeremy Corbyn rather than diminish it? I think commentators are in the media <laughs> elite, the, Janet. The court, so, yeah. go on. Um, well, not if the polls are to be believed. He's got his first set of polls as a new leader, and they are record-breaking in that he actually got a minus approval rating. This has never happened before. Even Michael Foote got a 2% approval rating. Jeremy Corbyn got a minus 3 approval rating. Now, it's possible to be charitable that he will increase he will get sympathy and he will get interest from people who are interested in this idea of a new kind of politics. But they will be interested in it as a function of opposition. They certainly don't want to elect a government that professes this rather wild, erratic, inconsistent kind of policies that come from nowhere and that contradict one another. He's now selling himself as the outsider who has come in. But the more he comes in, the more he has to sell out. His, his shadow chancellor is now saying they will go for reducing the, you know, putting the budget back in surplus and they will, you know, sort of not, not get into any further sort of shortage. But he, that they won't do it by a program of austerity, which means they have to do it by borrowing, which means the country gets into raising greater taxes, and greater right? debt. Raising taxes. Raising taxes and borrowing. Two uh, hugely unpopular... But that's a perfectly unpopular. reasonable debate, Janet. That's uh, it's a perfectly reasonable debate. But it's a debate that will keep them in opposition. Uh, there is no question that he is not going, he is not electable at this point. And it doesn't, I can't see any foreseeable future in which he could be electable because it's grown up to vote, the, 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 the only, kids who vote. The only point I would make is that he was 500 to 1. He's now leader of the Labour Party. <clears throat> Anybody who's underestimated him has made a mistake. Well, so far. So far, yes. And, and where I disagree with Janet is it doesn't matter if he's electable now. The elections four plus years away, nearly, nearly five years away. He has a lot of time to moderate himself, um, work on his presentation, possibly hire a, a spin doctor or two, even though he doesn't want to be a spinner. Um, it, it's too early to write him off because he, he represented a real grassroots movement. Um, but he did not have a plan on how to sound coherent upon taking over the mantle of leadership, and he's, he's paying the price for that now, and maybe we'll see with the party conference a more coherent message. Just, just quickly, when you say minus two, minus three, does that mean he's lost support since... since no, it means that he is actually disapproved of. He is, has got a minus three rating. He has no approval. He has less than <laughs> Before, zero okay, approval. Well, by the I, I question the methodology. Uh, but I, anyway. I, I think we could all... Opinion polls have not done brilliantly <laughs> in the right, past year. Right. But uh, we don't, I think we'd all agree that. Yeah. Just, just one qu specific question about American politics, which may seem a world away, but we have seen with Bernie Sanders on the left of the mm -hmm. Democratic Party doing very well. We have seen with John Boehner, sort of a centrist Republican, I suppose yeah. one could say, yes. quitting as Speaker of the House of Representatives. Yeah. Political parties in Western Europe and the United States, North America and other places too, are suffering from turmoil within their own ranks because of discontent over various things. Yes, and It's not just the Labour right, Party. And voters, voters are unhappy with the status quo and unhappy with, with politics as usual. The exception being the president at the moment, uh, Obama, is enjoying a, a relatively sanguine uh, popular stretch, but he's not running for re-election. Uh, Dimitri, his foreign policy, uh, to, to, to go back to Jeremy Corbyn, his foreign policy will be debated this week, Trident and other things. How do you think he'll get on with Putin? Because he said some quite kindly things about Putin, which is not tends not to be the view of other British politicians. Well, I think um, whatever or whoever can uh, add to Putin's support internationally is a good thing for Putin himself, right? So whether it is a newly elected Labour, uh, leader of the Labour Party or whether it is Don Donald Trump, I think it's all about Putin trying to demonstrate every time, and we, we will see it uh, next week at the General Assembly, the ineptness of Western politics in the first place. So we will, but... He, he may find people agree with him, uh, surprising people what, agree that, with that, him. That, that's what I'm saying. And, Another thing is that where, whether Putin's strategy in Syria is going to lead Russia to actually deploy ground troops, which will go against what Corbyn stands for in terms of actually renegotiating the whole of Middle East. Because remember, he was against Iraq. He was he 
how he is he thinking of <coughs> fighting ISIS or the group called, that calls itself ISIS? I don't know. And Putin probably has a much sterner view on that because he actually probably the only leader in the world right now who has practical experience of crushing down in, uh, down Islamic insurgency that was in Chechnya in the 90s. Uh, we'll get on to that in more detail, but that's a very interesting point. And, and in terms of, Mark, in terms of Jeremy Corbyn, I mean, do you see him having a bit of a fair win because people will be refreshed in a way? He's, he's definitely very different from anything that we've seen recently. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, Europe is quite welcoming Corbyn because he said he will support Britain staying into Europe. And by saying that, he has completely <coughs> put the conservatives who are divided about Europe, who are full of nasty Eurosceptics, who are shouting, close to Nigel Farage, UKIP. Well, Mr. Corbyn is a friend of Europe. Yeah, and that is, that is, recently. yes, but it's better. And I think he had there a very good departure, you know, uh, after the press killed him almost. Um, very good departure. It's a new type of policy where he chose certain area where he can move forward like Europe and certain area where there is disagreement in the party. People now are very, very uh, plural and no party can be monolithic like on the Blair when there was just one message today. So you can you have, you can a have discuss, just a, I know Janet is yeah. aching to come in here. I can hear. But don't uh, let know, her the, get you, in. The, the shadow, <laughs> the, I will let her get in. I will. I will. I promise. Um, the shadow chancellor is saying we can have discussions without divisions. This is what democracy is about. That's going to be the tone of the Labour Party conference. Is that Absolutely. You, and I think it's a new type of policy which is welcome at a time with social media where policy, politics is imploding and people unhappy with left and right, well, the Labour Party well, showing the if, way of a if, democratic if, um, debate. If the Conservatives did the same thing, there would be a huge row as of well. Course. As you know, there's huge divisions of course. in the party. The, the, but the point of parties that want to be governments is that they have to look unified, they have to look coherent, or they're not plausible as governments. You can break down into this kind of sophomoric, you know, sort of amateurish kind of backbiting and controversy while you're in opposition, but you will not be electable. The point about... Um, um, Corbyn's European stance is, is a classic example of what he has had to do in order to appease his party. And it's one of the things that will contribute to the fact that the ideological purists who pushed him forward are soon going to start calling him a sellout. He is a throwback to the time, or was a throwback to the time, when Euroscepticism was a left-wing thing. Tony Benn was the great Euroskeptic, the one who campaigned against going in in the first place. A lot place. of people forget that, actually. Yes, but, yeah. and Corbyn was very much on that side of the party. Now, he's had to do this incredible vault well, fast you do where like he says Syriza. And Sorry. Theresa was re-elected in Greece. Yes. Oh, exactly yes. that. Yes, that was same Greece. story. <laughs> that was Greece. And they were, the well, Greece, British Greece Britain, same no, thing. No, it isn't. J just no. just a, a, a couple of quick points on this. One of the things that seems to be happening, however, is he's promising more grassroots democracy. In other words, that Labour Party members will have more say, that the party conference will have more say. Uh, he, he's not bringing many of his MPs with him. Does that matter, or do you see any of you see reselection of MPs as being something that's on the agenda, but nobody's talking about? Hmm. I think the interesting thing for me is that for the first time, well, I think the London Brighton Railway is shut on Sunday, incidentally. I think well, I nobody can get out of well, Brighton. That's one thing. But uh, sec <laughs> secondly, I think that when um, when Miliband was criticised for not appealing to the middle ground uh, of British electorate to make the Labour Party kind of go stretch further, uh, both ways. Uh, this will be the first time where Jeremy Corbyn will be appealing actually to the nation as a whole because he will be obviously giving a speech so that this is probably the first time after the internal Labour election which is probably will, or, of limited interest to uh, wider country anyway and I, I say mm. it with caveats obviously but I think it's about what kind of how he will position himself within the party and what kind of you know maybe shadow cabinet is not going to be playing that important role as how you know it was a case in the past. And that's a fair, fair point just very briefly because it is a showcase because people pay a bit more attention to party conferences he and had, they will be the shock of the new who is he what does he say yeah like? but he had his moment in the there was a lot of interest in his first appearance at pmqs and it was mm. a bit of a Prime Minister's question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just it, 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 that was the word I was looking for. It, it, it didn't really carry either way. It wasn't really great. It wasn't really terrible. Okay, let's.